First up, modification changes. Nothing to add, John? No. No? <laughs> Anybody? No? Not All right, nothing uh, to modify or change. Uh, next. Just, uh, to add or other business? Leonard. Probably yeah. other business would be fine. Other business? Yeah, this would be other yeah. business. Yeah. Okay. All right, uh, public comment. Is everybody here from the public who wishes to speak tonight? Are you an agenda item? No, I came in case there was anybody here to complain about the speed bumps. I've been hearing a lot of chatter about it, and I was going to wait in on here to talk about it. Well, now's the time. Yeah, you can talk, and they don't what need What are to. your thoughts? <laughs> We'd like to, we like to, We'd like to hear your feedback, too. Okay. Uh, well, we've already provided our... My name is Jim McKinstry, for those of you who don't know me. Hello. I live on uh, a small private road off Water Tower, and we are very much enjoying the, the slower speed of traffic going up and down Water Tower Road from Berkshire direction. And uh, we feel um, much safer walking on Water Tower Road when we go for walks and even just pulling out of our driveway, not having to worry about uh, large trucks and other traffic uh, coming from Berkshire direction toward the village and uh, it coming over that blind hill at a high rate of speed. So that was going to be my input. Good. Well, that's wonderful. That's great. Thank you. We really appreciate that. Uh, we've spoken with our neighbors in the area, and they are of a similar view. So everybody in that section of Water Tower Road is of the same opinion. Good. That's good right. to know. I know there's a lot of people not having first put them in, but... Get used to it. Yeah. But you yeah. need to go ahead the speed weeks. limit and go over it. Yeah. Like, yeah. That they work And once you fine. realize that as long as you drive the speed limit, you're okay, you get mm -hmm. used to it after a bit. Mm -hmm. 6.34 p.m. That's good. And if you don't, well then, you know, <laughs> you get no muscle. <laughs> <laughs> it isn't causing too much noise for residents because people are worried about that. Uh, there are some folks who are not very happy about it and... Uh, blow their horn very loudly mm -hmm. and for yeah. long. Orchard period. Street had that for a while too. Yeah. yeah, well we we still get it occasionally and there was there was a couple of trucks that did it consistently for the first couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. But it's subsided now. Okay. That's good. They're on bit tired. It's good well, to that, that's good news. I'm glad yeah. that they're working. Yeah. Water tower's been a issue with speeding ever since I've been on board, so well, long before I was ever on this board, mm -hmm. I used to walk on Water Tower Road and I stopped because it was just too damn scary. Yeah. So that's good to hear that you can you feel you can walk on it again. Uh, so a question: mm -hmm. the the uh, equipment that's been set out on Orchard Street is it different somehow from what's on Water Tower? Okay. Is the pitch of it different or something? The speed bumps no. themselves? Yeah. No, they're the same. Ah, okay. No, same exact uh, so I've tested them uh, after hearing complaints from folks about uh, teeth jarring going over them at the speed limit. I tried them out and I didn't think so. so my, my vehicles handled just fine. So last year's, the ones we had in last year in Orchard were different. They were, uh, they were, they made you slow down more. They were a zero to five. Yeah, they were very aggressive. These are 15 to 20. Yeah. So last year's, yes, but now they're all. At this point, they're all the same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But that's that was my th thought as well. Even at the speed limit of 25, it there, it was not um, it, it was not uncomfortable to go over them. It wasn't jarring or anything like that. Good. Great. Thank Makes you. us feel like we did something right. Yeah. <laughs> Every <laughs> once in a while, get one. <laughs> we don't always, you know. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for that. Um, any other public comment? Anything else? Okay. <laughs> We're welcome to save the rest of the meeting. Yes. But, I got for a little while. But thank you. Yeah, thank you for coming in. Um, all right, review and approval for the minutes of June 25th. If everyone got a chance to look those over and didn't see any errors or omissions. I move we approve. They're fine. You got it? All right. Sandy with the first, Leonard with the second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay.
two pickup trucks and a trailer full from the Lions Club. Um, what was the maybe for Maple Park? They're thinking like it might be big enough to have an overflow. One year we had, and I'm saying we because I used to be on the committee, one year we had a quilt show that the quilting ladies were doing and it looked like there really wouldn't be enough room to put them in the park properly spaced and have room for all the vendors. So we decided to put them over on Maple Park. So they may have, not being on the committee anymore, they may have something of that sort that they feel is gonna spill out too much and need to go to Maple Park. Yeah, I think last year they were trying to get like, Car. anti-cars or show. tractors yeah. And then and maybe stuff. they've succeeded this year. Yeah, okay. so I took the park over there just kind of browse around, I don't. Okay. It will be all right if they park on the park? It's just, I would think so, it's just, you know, from, from 9 o'clock in the morning to 4 o'clock in the afternoon. The board would be all right with that, no? Driving on grass? Not in the park, yeah. At last year we told her, told her it was weather dependent. Right. Or, or yeah, wetness, well, yeah, if it's pouring and muddy, that's a different thing. Yeah. And people wouldn't bring their cars out anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, get my car wet? I don't think so. <laughs> exactly. And we have no scheduling conflicts with Maple Park during that time. No. All right, I'm all right with it. Um, motion to approve this park use application as well as the bandstand request. Uh, we need the move. A second. Eli the first, head of the second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed nay. Motion carries. Um, I feel your hot breath. <laughs> I feel your hot breath. <laughs> uh, finish painting Maple Park using appropriated ARPA funds. So, as we all know, we paid the one section of a park after the uh, construction was done. Um, a good portion of that was picked up by the uh, project itself. Um, I think we estimated about 40000 left that we had in our ARPA fund savings that was appropriated to pay that. Um, so it's hoping to get it all done this year and get it cleaned up. Gary had sent out three requests for quotes. Um, I think it's Johnson Paving. Uh, he has not heard back. Um, we had these two quotes here. Um, so I guess you're good with either of those quotes to move forward and take a Maple Park with the designated ARPA funds to complete that project. What a difference in cost. Yeah, yeah I don't see one for an ECI. I'm good, probably just not looking at it right. It's straight on the front for the sum of 205 yeah. per ton. It doesn't so give you a total, it gives yeah. you a tonnage price. Yeah. So there's how but they got the same square estimate footage. Estimate is 150, hold on, I can tell you. 175 tons. Right, 100. ECI says 150 ton plus or minus, and you had that. Wright says 175 ton. We did the math, but it doesn't look like he wrote it down in here. 205 times 150. So 30,000, 30, give or take, 30 to 35 probably. Either way, rights is under ECI. Yeah. And very local. And very local. Very yeah, local. local. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Um, move to accept rights excavation for their bid of 21,000 for paving uh, Maple Park. Do we have to do anything about the... We need to waive the waive procurement. Waive the procurement policy. Yeah. There you go. I'll move. You like the first, the same with the second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed nay. I'm pretty sure they both said that they could get to this by this fall. So, just show that. Awesome. All right, that motion carries. Uh, policing. 
So per the joint meeting, and maybe Abby and Sandy, and I think other, I didn't make the meeting. Um, I was out of town, but uh, um, so there was a joint meeting. Um, and if you want to speak to it. So the plan right now is to form an advisory committee with two, with the board tonight appointing two members to be on that committee. Could be anyone in this room, public. <laughs> There's no really real restriction on that from the from the village. village. So the village is going to send two. The town of Enosburg is going to send two. Sheldon is sending two, and Richford is sending two. So there's going to be an eight-member eight advisory board with the direction primarily coming from the select boards and the trustees. But the intent is to basically a four-member full-time police service is going to cost you this. The five-member is going to cost you this. And to start pulling together actual numbers and get to the point of formulating a game plan. And please jump in if I'm missing. Well, and we reason. have, and we, I think, if I'm correct, we are also to have the, shall we call it at this point, kind of quasi-expert advice of Tom Oliver and um, Bob Morris. So we're not sure if Sheldon's just going to nominate them both as Sheldon residents to be on the board or if we're just going to use them as kind of the consultants to go to. That would be nice. And, and we have a point. consultant that can't be a consultant from Enosburg and also can't be on the board, um, but that is also in law enforcement, that is more than willing to help. As a matter of fact, he cornered me at the tavern the other night. <laughs> so, yeah. And uh, yeah, that's uh, Wes Martin. But he. It's a conflict of interest for him to be on anything formally with us, but he told me to make sure that I said that he would be willing to help in any way that he could as a citizen with his expertise. And general consensus from the town representatives seems to be everybody wants it, but they're not willing or able to pay a lot more than what they already have budgeted in their budgets right now. So that may make it trickier down the road as far as how things are set up because I know Sheldon doesn't budget nearly as much as what say Richford budgets um, and I know I can't think of Stein Stein out Stein was there from Richford and I mean said they could go up a little bit but not significantly from where where they are at with their budget so it until we get hard numbers it'll it's kind of everything up in the air and there was the suggestion um, I think Lisa Hango made it I know we reached out to the St. Albans barracks to let them know or it's my understanding from what your conversation with the town were to let them know and to see if they had any other troops available basically to pick up extra hours in Enosburg with some of the funds that have already been budgeted for the remainder of the year at the time they said they didn't have the capacity so she recommended reaching out directly to the commissioner and seeing to pay him extra. You have to, you would have to do a contract. Yeah, I never really liked that idea. Jeffersonville you're, does that. You're already. I ain't paying twice. For you're something. already paying for yeah. it yeah. with your state taxes, yeah. technically. Yeah. But that was the suggestion for an immediate solution right now. If there were anybody able to do it. Um, but John had already reached out to pretty much everyone and anyone within earshot to see if we could get coverage. So Sheldon has coverage currently, correct? No, they, they did not they sign. They didn't sign. That was incorrect what he relayed. He put the cart before the horse and Sheldon last minute. They indicated initially they were going to and then last minute backed out due to the lack of transparency. What about Highgate? Highgate and Fairfax are the only two that signed. To my knowledge. Okay, I was wondering about Sheldon. Yeah. No, nope, they ended up backing out, like I yeah, said, I read the that. Yeah. No, he published that news article, but they hadn't signed the contract yet, and they decided the board had a last minute meeting, and my understanding was due to his lack of transparency and willing to be upfront and honest about the numbers, they did not feel comfortable <laughs> moving forward. But you know how news articles go? They sell newspapers. And my understanding is they were charging Sheldon at a much higher rate than they were other towns for the same coverage. So, hmm. 
Well, I think also on this, the committee will, the, they want people to look at like models that already exist. Right. Um, because there was kind of a question of how does like the multiple municipality go in together? Is it a regional or is it one, you know, how does that work and how do other communities do it? I mean, if we're trying to get, if we're trying to like conceptualize ideas of exactly what this is going to be, I think we're going to need some actual experts and not right. residences. Mm -hmm. We know what we need, we just need to know how much it's going to cost. And how, and how do you procure it? And, and, and right. I think the point of the board, too, is no, maybe not everyone that's on it is an expert in it, but utilize Bob, utilize Tom, reach out. You know, like there's Morristown, there's Berlin, there's Hens, but there's all these other police departments. Like, quite honestly, what's your budget and how many people and what's the square mileage in the population that you're covering? Because it's all public knowledge, so we should easily, whoever's on that board should easily be able to get that, look at the size of the department, the area that we're looking to cover, and then pull numbers together. So does anybody have any recommendations of village residents that would have that kind of expertise? It, and it doesn't, it could be, because I know John and I are not in the village, but if the board wanted to, it could be one of us as a representative from the village. So or, does it have to be a resident? No, but it could be one of us as a working Perhaps for the village. Perhaps Adam and, and then, Sam? Could be two um, people, oh, all right. Yeah, we need to send two, and it could be a community member. We did have one express interest, but then he's not able to anymore. Right. But. but I would, but I don't really have anything to bring to the conversation. Other than <laughs> a general common sense knowledge, which personally I happen to think you have a great deal of. Um, and so, and Abby has um, some I think past Abby, knowledge of. Yeah working for dispatch and that sort of thing. Um, got, got and and good financial knowledge. Yep. Yes. Congratulations. <laughs> this is one of those bomb told moments, like here you go, hot five. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks, I think. Uh, one, one more. Uh, unless it has to be me. Who's the fellow that lives on, is it Scott? Dean Scott? On Watertown? Mm-hmm. Dino? He wouldn't be a cop with the ambulance? Right, because he's on Swanton. He's an SRO officer for Swanton now, but he did use to work the road part-time. Just right. Well, but he's he be doing one now? Yeah. 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 Is that conflict, like Wesley conflicted? <laughs> It might, because I mean, as in Wesley, you know, Wesley right. said, I would, I really would like to, but I cannot. Right. So it's very possible that in Dean's I line of work, you have to say that. Not a state. I don't understand what? why you couldn't do that. Which? I don't know. Wesley. He's a border patrol officer. They have theirs in their contracts. There's their, some specific stuff. Their rules stuff. are pretty strict. And I don't know how Swanton is set up. I mean, we could definitely. We we'll reach out to him. Yeah. Yeah, well, we don't know. Do we even know when that? Did we set the date for the next meeting? August something. I August first was thrown out, but I don't know. I, it was hard to tell if they actually we said August August everyone, August August was the meeting was, or sometime after. We're August the first. last meeting to nominate our two, and then at that point it was I think send everything to Dean, and they were taking the front running with this or to somehow coordinate Good everybody home. on. There was not a final decision as to when we were going to actually meet. I know they wanted this to move very quickly. They did, but they also did they not did, set a didn't. deadline. No. We had talked a, a, quite a bit about that, like is the deadline yeah. trying to be for so town meeting so that we can put I something before taxpayers, <laughs> uh, before voters <laughs> about any... Because Lisa was saying what something about charter changes that would have to be so involved in that. So Enosburg that. Village, Enosburg Town, and Richford have it in their charter and do not need to do a charter okay. change. The only one that I don't know about is Sheldon because talking with them outside after, Lisa did look it up on her phone. So because at one point the village had a police officer, so it's in our charter, Enosburg Town and Richford. So and could we not, if it became necessary and Sheldon was gonna take four or five years to have their charter change, 
that we could organize and then we could contract out to Sheldon and yes. take care of them. Right. That that's, and that's part of the conversation too was like maybe only one municipality over is like the overseeing entity and everybody and, contracts. Yeah, so it was kind of a do we go in together or do, do they contract out? Because that's where it also gets tricky back to what I was saying about the comment of other towns wanting to go in on it but not necessarily much more sort of it. We want to be a part of it, but we don't want to pay <laughs> a lot more for it, which I, I do understand it is what it is. from a taxpayer perspective. I'd like to but see Enosburg at the forefront of the whole thing. I, I just personally think that the town and the village of Enosburg could maybe do the best job. Just my thought. As opposed to too many cooks spoil the broth. Right. I mean, I don't mind being a, if you want me to ask me, I don't mind doing it too if you want me to back up. I've I can, researched I can all the, message Dean right now. And yeah, if you him. would, just ask We'll put you in the forefront, not the back up. <laughs> See, I'm like kicking on a table. I'm like, what the <laughs> Why are you not volunteering for you that? You just end up with one of his work boots, hurt your foot. <laughs> okay, so do we want to have. Uh, Did you catch the. Well, we'll. We'll table this, we'll come back to it at the end of the meeting and see if you want I'll send him a message right now. Okay. Let's see. And uh, we'll go from there. Sounds good. Um, all right. Shorts, fire, hydrant, attachment. <laughs> what is that? This is, it's just more of an FYI. Um, apparently, there are these letters that Mark Rose dug out of the pile. Um, <laughs> 2012, 2015, just some requests that the fire department had of the water department. Um, and some of them, most of it's completed. It's like a, a hydrant on Church Street. Um, but one of the things that he had asked for was the Storts Quick Connect for the fire hydrants. So we're going to be putting those and being able to budget it into the project so we'll cut through Elm Street. All the items there will have them, and then we're going to we'll work with Gary for this year's budget. We'll start sprinkling them out throughout because that was the goal was just to do so many per year. They're not cheap, it's 450 bucks. So if you're talking per, per hydrant, per hydrant, yeah. per so if you're talking, you know, 10 that adds up quick. So we started down that road. We're going to start with Elm Street, like I said, it's part of the, the project. They're going to install all the ones that are, I think there's nine or 10 on Elm that will. At this, and then we'll budget in a couple more in here. So that was just more of an FYI. Any questions on that? Sounds good. Yeah, what is that? It's just a quick connect valve for the hydrants. So That's they the way they connect to them. The way they It'll help put your fire out a little faster. One. Yeah. Okay. Just okay. Uh, <laughs> thread it. All right, manager's notes. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's been a busy couple of weeks. Uh, as you were just talking about, 24 Main Street is down. Obviously, no longer there. Looks great. The um, view up the river is just amazing. Yeah, everything went well. Um, like I said, we had a few, a few things found, archive things. Um, mm. She wasn't <laughs> We're closing no, on the night for the um, 32 Main Street. Oh, it's going next door. Yeah. The goal is, I'll be be working, um, we'll probably be in front of you next meeting, the 13th, because uh, we're working to hopefully get the <laughs> abatement testing done on 17, the brick house, at the same time as 32. Oh, I good thought, idea. I thought we didn't have to do that because it was a... Uh, it's a structural hazard, not no, not natural yeah. disaster. Yeah, so we're gonna do it just in case. Because it, it, I read into that a little bit long more. It's not. And it's gray, more of is like, it? Yeah, more of. And I'm, you know, we're we're. I when talking to the property manager when it was under foreclosure, he felt there's not gonna be much, if anything, in there because it's been so good. They say they remodeled it it's, over yeah, the last all 10 years everything. entirely. The only thing he could think of is if there's anything in the insulation in the ceiling yeah. or in the attic. But other than that, yeah. like, there's nothing he could see in the floors, the sheetrocks, all new. So. Okay. Um, I 
Water line project is underway. Um, you see the trees came down. Everything so far is going smoothly. Um, I'm Sorry, knocking, today. knock on wood there. Yeah. Um, it didn't work at all. I was wondering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't with the rain yet. Yeah. Oh, well. By five minutes after seven, it wasn't raining. It didn't rain all day. Yeah. They're already in town. Why? The only issue they have right now, they're trying to re-engineer a little bit and come up a few inches because they're hitting directly with the sewer line. So they've had to go 90s up and over the sewer line a couple of times, which is slowing down a bit, and obviously just creating more joints and more more area for the water to flow. So. They're working on realigning it, so those standees working on once they hopefully get over what they got over the other day on or, uh, Monday, and then they'll shoot go up a couple inches and then we'll shoot, shoot up the road. And, and Wayne's okay with those up and over joints? Yeah, I mean Gary had a little bit more concern just because you're just yeah. having joints instead yeah. of a straight pipe. So now you have three joints as opposed to no joints. Fluids don't like nineties. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah, just more more cause for error in the future. So they're working on realigning that. Um, the other thing too we just noticed is because uh, we during the tree cutting we had the, the road shut all the way down. Um, so probably again we may have one or two more days daytime before we have to shut the whole road down. And if we do that, we're probably more than likely going to uh, put no parking like the day before with a date on it on depot. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was I a little heard tight. Traffic issues. Yeah, I was, I was back and forth on the street <laughs> that day. Along. When you have two, and then there was there was quite a few clunks. Yeah, when you have two big trucks passing on that road with cars in the park, it's, yeah. there's not and, a lot. Of and nobody there. knows how to park the ones that are yeah. right, as. My friend Barbara says paralyzed park on the road. Uh, yeah, they hate judging. I don't care. They, you know, this far away from they the curb. Yeah. yeah. So that's probably one takeaway we've got so far is we'll probably put that out the day before and, and shut it down the day of um, on those few days remaining where we shut the whole Elm Street down. Should we inform like the area businesses? Too, like as people yeah. are out there just like knock on the business doors and just let them know because I think some of their staff and one of the things that work. isn't helping is the construction that's in the back of the Quincy mm -hmm. because most, most of the people that work at the vet clinic and a lot of the people that go to the vet clinic park behind the Quincy and right now parking back there between the lift and the other very good <coughs> sheet of plywood lift for lack of a better word um, are taking up a great little room, mm -hmm. and so there's not the parking's a little tight. So just turning around's a little tricky. I found the perfect memo that I sent to John Sunday night. Yeah. It says, "You see those vehicles taking an alternate route over there? We need to start construction over there too." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Welcome to the summer in the village." Yeah. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Based on like Route 36 <laughs> being closed and you know, 78 had construction. When yeah. this was closed right here, it was the day we were taking 24 down. I was walking over and this lady stopped and she goes, can you please tell me how to get to St. Albans? <laughs> She's like, I have no idea what to do or where to go right now because 36 was closed and yeah. that's always oh, go down Saint that Albans. way. Yeah, and then this was here. closed. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, keep going that way. She's like, can I make it though? And I'm like, yes, you're going to hit more construction, but there's no more tourists. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. There's more. Yeah. yeah. She's I like, have I don't care. Just kind of just to add people were very respectful on at least my part of pleasant street as the traffic was bumper to bumper so i'm just very happy we didn't put any speed bumps or anything around there. going into st albans i took woods hill and i go to the uh oh, mm -hmm. take a left there. so you you don't go through none of that construction yeah. that was close today too yep <laughs> it was they were over yeah. and it's real close is that okay I guess everything's close yeah. somewhere yeah. this month yep. It's it's something. Construction vacation. Yeah. Three month window. Yeah, yeah we're gonna be like Canada, where everybody and Paris, where everybody just shuts right down completely for the vacation, for the construction holiday. Yeah, ready for that. That was this week. <laughs> this week and next week. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they just finished on 
Monday, uh, yep, flipping the rack. So that process we were talking about. So they took the rack, racks out, they flipped them, they cleaned them, and re-welded the tops of them. Um, took a little bit longer than expected, but we were able to keep the village up and running with the water we had and this great <coughs> the village. Um, and it certainly beats hearing you need new racks. Yeah. So yeah, the racks, they should be pretty good for quite a few more years to come. Um, and then um, they just have to finish up changing the oil in the Kendall, and then we'll be able to put that back together and uh, get both hydros back with her. What was the tail race? The tail race was, um, so we had divers come in and look at the tail race. They went about 70 feet out because we had that uh, Turner group that thought that we should dredge it. From and, 2018. Yeah. And they're not seeing anything. They're not, they didn't, they said there's a couple rocks. They saw nothing more than like two feet around a few small rocks in the tail race. Um, they said it was the same level as river bottom. So. Yeah. They said the flow, I mean, they could tell by the river bottom of the flow that there's nothing obstructing the tail race. So they didn't Good. see any need right now to do anything with the tail race. They're going to document that too in a letter to us, just kind of what their findings are and send us the video because yeah, it was on FERC's radar because of this report yeah, being submitted. That, yeah. So that's why we had him get in the water again. So I didn't specifically ask for them to document that for us. Um, then we also have the, uh, their engineer come look at the village, to look at the tracks. Um, and we're still waiting on a report there, but we definitely have a few cracks that need to get filled there. So he's coming to together a report to find out what we need to do. I'll get back in there and fix They were those able to get under, the because we dewatered, they were able to actually go down underneath. And structurally, everything looks better than what we expected. Like John said, we do have a few kind of cracks on the external part that need to get clean because it's wasting water, essentially. And there's one section of the bridge that we're probably going to do at the same time because mm -hmm. Kind of scary, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's field it, but that first part of the bridge is field stone. It's not like so that so it's just field stone up. So there's some leaks there that so that we're gonna uh, have them repair too. I guess they're gonna like drill down and inject some kind of a cement in it. So. so that was kind of the um, excitement down here. Uh, but again, everything went pretty well. No, no, no serious issues. Um, just an update, Friday, we did close the office uh, last Friday on the 19th. We did get hit with that windows. Luckily, um, there are some municipalities that BEPS is still working with. Their, their uh, servers got hit, and they're down, and they're like having to work through down, and it's been quite a headache. Like literally, BEPS, uh, the BEPS IT folks work basically all day, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Wow. Um, like 16 hour days trying to figure this all out for everybody. I was scared because when I turned this, opened this oh, up, yeah. it said it, but I restarted it and no it let me in. Probably because so. it's off. Yeah. Um, so we just, the PCs here got hit. Um, I waited around for Kenzie and more came up and we get those back running. Um, and then I did the garage one this morning and got them up and running. So all back up and should be good. We had hotel guests that came in for a wedding for the weekend, and most of them came from the Dallas area. Most of them barely made it in time for the wedding, even though they thought they were, some of them were coming on Friday, oh, some Thursday place. night. One guy that I took out to the venue because he got here so late he didn't even have a ride, and he said he'd never put in such a thing in his life. Mm -hmm. He went all over the country just trying to get from Dallas to Vermont. Wow. I heard the flights are still... They're still a mess. Yeah. But, yeah. Delta, Delta specifically is having that. a really hard time. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a mess. We were lucky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it we was lucky. no worse than it was. Yeah, no, we were lucky that it wasn't. Um, just a follow up on Franklin Foods flushing. We talked about that a few months ago. Um, so Brian and John they kind of agreed. Um, so basically, Franklin Foods is going to take over the flushing. They're going to do it. Uh, Jewett there that calls for them. Yep. He's going to do the flushing and Brian going over and like kind of going over what to do the first couple times and then he's just going to spot check probably once a week. Um, so that's kind of agreement on there as a follow up to that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and just I know Franklin Foods 
got their accounting issue resolved, so we did okay, receive good. the payment on time, and they did pay the interest, no questions or arguments right. asked. And they have us now set up automatic ACH directly <coughs> into the bank account, so we don't have to deal with checks and the postage and all of that. So sure. that seems to be back on track. And then late breaking, the tree is off the old hydro up in. Wonderful. So, and yeah. very minimal. Area will do it like um, three little bushes and knocked over. That's it. Is that today? This morning. Yeah. yeah, I drove by. Yeah, and I was like, what's going on with the rail trail? And they're from yeah. over there where I was. Yeah. So that's Great. it. That's all I got for now. I'll do due diligence and call in the morning. Thank you, John. Yes, thank you. Other business. Somebody had something? Leonard? So Leonard's got, um, <laughs> assuming I can, I don't know if this is, I don't see a deadline, Leonard, so we can type this up if you want, and then I can um, uh, bring it back on the 13th. But so Leonard dropped this off, you're more than welcome to look at it. So Franklin Field Days is, I guess, looking to partition the state and is looking for support from local businesses, local municipalities um, to keep it. To see if the state will allow them to purchase where the field days are. Oh, so they don't have so to move. So they don't have to move. They're saying here that they've searched the world over and they can't find a location. So they're going to the partition. That's what uh, I said that today. Lisa, they uh, they've never even contacted her. Because I asked her, I said, man, that would be really great. Are you going to sell it to them? She said, well, I would, but they've never even asked me. You probably have room there. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I mean, if you encompass everything, you know, sure, she they might have to move the Little League field. You know, yeah. that might have to go somewhere else, or maybe it could the still stay there. There's up, there's up in the back where yeah. the airfield was. Yeah, That's no, all belongs to that property. So I guess the request, I mean, if we want to, uh, conf I mean, it's kind of a... Um... They just want our support. Yeah. They're not asking for money or nothing like that. They just want to know. Uh, and uh, Pierre said the more signatures we got on that paper, the better uh, it would cost. It says right on there, uh, it would cost them a fortune to move because they got all them buildings up. Yeah. They're all well situated. And um, the, the airport, they, they were able to push out. Uh, Habitat. Oh, the big warehouse. Yeah, they were able to push them out. The airport wants to enlarge, and uh, this is just beyond the airport. And the airport was talking about maybe enlarging air, but I guess our government has slowed that project right down. Yeah, and the wetlands up there. Issues, I guess, they're running into. So it, it's just uh, they'd like our support. Yeah. Uh, Agriculture, we're supposed to be the dairy capital of the world here. Uh, in Enosburg. In Enosburg, wow. Well, right. And surrounding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'll think about that one. Yeah, I want more context of why were they. I, so they were trying to move the field days location because the airport wanted to acquire that location? Yeah, the it's airport wanted them gone. The no, airport already owned it. They 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 own own we own the land, we want you out of here. Right. Because they're they're expanding the runway both in blank and wet. Yeah, because they're going in both directions. They're headed down Swanton Way as well, where there's a house and a barn and a bunch of other land in the, the They're house. not adding a uh, strip, are they? I don't know, but the, I think those buildings, the house and the barn are coming down, and if you look at the tape that they've got all over the place, it goes in the direction of Swanton, way past that house and barn that they've boarded up. Yeah. Um, so they're headed in that direction, too. They are later. I don't know if we're back there, but it's kind of a mess with them. So people personally own the hangars, and they can't move the hangars. So they don't have the room for it. So they may, they may put some on the right hand side. But in order to, with, to widen the runway, they got to put a bunch of hangers in the garage and all this sort of stuff. And they are, they're lengthening it to be allowed to be able to paint Yeah. Yeah, a thousand feet. Yeah. Well, this doesn't mean 
that they're going to get it. But, uh, I was going to say, they're not sure that they can stay, right? Yeah, they, they're, we're, they're asking. I know they want to stay, yeah. but are they sure they this can one stay? No, that's why they're asking our support. Oh, okay. If they get enough support, uh, maybe they think they'll stand a better chance. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. To stay. yeah. I just can't see holding the whole airport project up for a long weekend of fun. Right. Yeah. Do, they, do they use that space for anything else? Well, uh, they, they winter storage. If you chose to do that. Once in a while. I don't know. Pierre would like your signatures. That's all I can say. Pierre. He's the vice president this year. Is he looking for us individually or as the board? He'd like it individually. There'd be more signatures. So representing ourselves, not rep as board members. And is there a deadline that they need these signatures by? Uh, yeah, and it's supposed to be late now. <laughs> That's <laughs> always the deadline. <laughs> Uh, it read Enosburg out for the first paragraph. It says Enosburg right on the first paragraph, right? They filled us in. I don't know when I read it earlier. Oh, it said Enosburg in there. I don't care. What's your name? Well, I personally am going to offer now. Well, I just, I also wonder, okay, so we say yes, and, and they get to keep it for a minute. Um, and then the airport has now expanded some, and it's very successful, and they want to expand some more. You know, then they may have to go in. Did they so. know when they built those buildings? I mean, they, they had to know that there was a possibility down the road before they built all of those buildings. I well, if you look at them, none of them are super temporary. No, that's what kind, kind of what I'm getting at. Like, they knew this day was potentially going to come at some yeah. point. I mean, it's a, it's a very unfortunate situation mm -hmm. for field days, but... I thought they had the alternate location picked out. It fell through and um, neighbors voted against it because of noise concerns, is what I read. Those carnival people can be noisy. Well, I can attest to that. Keep calling it children. It's okay. What do you want to think on it? We'll keep moving. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any other business? Um, I had a conversation about um, safety for students around uh, this Innsbruck Elementary, and there was a wonder if we could would consider um, putting in the flashing crosswalk lights on School Street and School in Dickinson, that intersection. Um, as you, the, you've probably seen like there's a really large car line you know, for parents dropping off and picking up and there's a crosswalk right there. Uh, they are, have not been successful at you know, having uh, crossing guards for a long time and uh, so they were wondering that like maybe that would help increase student safety because um, besides the cars like going around the corner parking around here the crosswalk being right here other drivers are passing people on the car line and so a lot of parked cars you have cars passing those cars and then another way of traffic so just trying to problem solve how to make that a little bit safer for kids to go to and have they school. put it out oh go ahead Sandy. I've seen that line as I've walked in the morning mm -hmm. and a, one question keeps coming to my mind mm -hmm. is there a a child that ever walks to school yes and B do the buses have any children on them yes because I see like you know 200 people bringing their kid to school and yes. I just can't quite figure it out Yes, in the town this size. And I see all buses of that. go by home with five, six kids and in I, the bus. And I can say that there's a, there's a big, because I'm on the Safe Rest to School group, um, you know, there's a, we are working really hard to try to get folks that have kids that are old enough to walk, that live in the village, so therefore they're not on the bus line, because you may or may not recall, like if you live within a mile of the school, you're not on the bus line, so you can't take the bus. So we're working on trying ways to incentivize the kids to walk to and from school, um, trying to build up that uh, uh, pedestrian mentality. 
like the, we're trying. Um, COVID really in, like impacted that quite a bit. It just people got into a routine of dropping kids off and not having them on the bus. And there's a lot of people that there's a lot of resistance going back into walking. Um, and so, you know, while we're trying to increase the walking, we're also looking at safety levels. Uh, you know, part of the conversation is kind of like bringing to light how expensive those are and that maybe we can look at the grants, but if we would put it on our radar um, as a potential spot for flashing crosswalk. Now this would be point. the crosswalk crossing School Street going to Dickinson? Yeah, School Street oh, going okay. to Dickinson. It's yeah. also really, really hard if you're By coming out of on the corner. Yep. And if you're coming out of Dickinson, it, there's a big blind spot on your left. Um, so when you're trying to make the turns, like the house, they, they cut down a lot of trees, so you, um, the people who purchased the property recently, so you can see better, but it is still pretty hard to, to see. Um, so it's just one strategy we're thinking, or if there's other stuff that we could potentially do just to help it encourage more kids to walk. Yeah, I've got no problem with it. You don't have any money for it, but. <laughs> we yeah, well, we can think if, about it next time. I agree. If you want to buy it. That's great. That we can throw it in. I reached out to NRPC. They're supposed to be also assisting in trying to find some grants because I asked. I know we budgeted for we Maine and Bismarck. I'm sorry, what? Because we do have one more. We do. In the budget, Maine and Bismarck. Yes. Was approved right. in this year's budget. Mm -hmm. We haven't put it up yet. I was trying to see if maybe I could find a grant for that, but I have not heard back from NRPC, but I will move that to the forefront to follow up with them if there is a grant for either one of them. So we do have one budget. Item. Yeah, and as long as we're mindful of that as a potential and then um, you know, safe routes to school and local motion could, you know, support a grant in some way or another, writing a letter of support or something and kind of shows the you know, the action that we're trying to maintain mobility and safety. So it might help. Okay. Any other business? I have one quick little thing. The band's hand group met for the first time yesterday. Um, we're going to meet again the 12th. Sounds good. Or whatever that Monday is. A um, lot of big ideas so far. A little on the expensive side? Uh, we're very extreme. We're starting very extreme. Not that's gonna. How many? There's there's still six people, right? Five five people on the board. It's not. It's kind of a whoever shows up sort so of thing. Elements? I don't think so. I, I kind of noticed that it expanded there's, quite exponentially. Um. So not everybody that was on the email was there. So okay. Ellen, <laughs> myself, Shauna, Pierre, uh, Laterno, um. I can't think of the other gentleman. Jamie Lizzo. Yes, thank Jamie. you. Who is a carpenter slash went to school for architecture, so he's going to be the one drawing up some plans. Um, Susie did come partway through the meeting. And Brian Sylvester has interests and big ideas, yeah. but was not able to make the meeting. So there's a lot of people on the email, but who's actually showing up. And then um, is it Steve Flurry? Mm -hmm. yeah. is also been sending email input because he is like the manager of the town band but okay. so it's not as big as what is on the email I think Alan's just trying to keep everyone in the loop yeah and, and no problem with that I just have a I got a personal bias against big committees <laughs> they don't go anywhere was well, anything talked about the painting <laughs> yep at this painting oh, the railings. railings so we actually went over there today because it was brought up about mm -hmm. the pump for the fountain being down there mm -hmm. and that there was some concern that maybe that was causing the water issue down there but that's not it and it was not as wet as we were led to believe it was. I had never been down there until today and A it's creepy. <laughs> but so there's been some discussions around some of that and what can be done. We did go out there with John, Gary, Ken and myself this morning and kind of did a walkthrough of everything. So Evie, Shauna did uh, talk to me about that. So Ken's aware it's on his radar. They just have not had the time to get oh, to it. The goddess, yeah. But um, they're aware, and he's going to start looking at paint, and because they're going to have to wire brush it before they're even able to paint it. So it's going to be—it's not so much that 
the paint itself is going to be expensive, but there's going to be a fair amount of labor hours on our guys. Are you going to save I don't know. Him and Gary yeah. and him were kind of for kicking out a couple different ways of, you know, how they could quickly go through it mm -hmm. and try to do that and to try to get somewhat of a finished paint that matches what's around the doughboy because I think it's like a satin or semi gloss of. So Ken's on it, it's on his radar, but. So I think now would be a good time to um, get an idea for how involved you want to get. Is it like going to be a little spruce the band stand up project or is it going to be a full on pretty much in the ground up? Yeah. I'm going to be 100% honest with you and I don't mean to interrupt. I think there needs to be a little direction because it first was kicking around does the band own it, this or that. And I finally said, well, careful what you wish for, because if you keep going down that rabbit hole and we find out you own it, then this conversation's on you for yeah. any of the maintenance. Yeah. And it, it, it kind of changed a little bit, but I'm fairly confident through some of the history stuff <laughs> that the village does own it. And I did point out that at the end of the day, we can pitch ideas, but the decision is gonna fall with the Board of Trustees, what the final decision is gonna for be. Because sure. I mean, they're, the ideas, that are out there right now are very broad spectrum. I mean, you guys have been on the emails. Yeah, so. if we're gonna lower the floor and heighten the ceiling, mm -hmm. might as well make a whole new one. It's yeah. it's getting quite drastic. So, I mean, if there's grant funding to do a great big drastic project, I would potentially support that, but I feel like yeah, they probably need to have a, this is what, it's like gonna be local money. This is what yeah. we can afford. And yeah. This is how it's gonna look. Yeah, so kind of like this. Is, this is what we're right, and then let's look for the grant monies and see if there's something we can do in the future. I, I think maybe the next meeting, I know John's going to be at the next meeting too, to kind of reiterate that it's definitely not happening this year, and next year could be questionable too, depending on grants and funding sources yeah. and, so it's like and everything. So it's a, it's a good kind of long term. I mean, there's some short-term fixes that I think we could do, especially around the basement to clean that up a little bit. But long-term, I mean, it depends on how major you, you guys want this project to go. Yeah. So this whole ball started getting kicked around because we wanted to uh, set stairs in the front, right? That's what we that, first That started. was yeah. what we want. Yeah. So I think we need to give a hard line of we want stairs and here's the budget. Yeah, I think like cause, like stairs accessibility were our top priorities, and we wanted to clean it up a little bit. Um, and I think that needs to be in the foreseeable future, something yeah. doable that we can do pretty quickly. Because right. there, it is totally, absolutely not handicapped accessible. No. And those right. stairs and are very accessible. narrow and hard. Oh, those stairs are not good. No. It was no. like a temporary thing, and you know, the temporary fixes always last forever. Say, say, would you say they want to raise the roof? Uh, I was just. There, there's a lot of ideas pitched around to make it more uh, like a, I'm an amphitheater, but uh, yeah, but sort of like they want to adjust they want the acoustics, acoustics because they said that all this, the sound for most things just stays there and doesn't go out to the audience, um, so they want to adjust the acoustics to make it perform better. Uh, the stuff that they said made sense. It's just it's, it's yeah. not a so in a lot of uh, dance halls or whatever they put this like four by eight sheets of this special stuff mm -hmm. to kill the, what do you call that? The vibration? The vibration from the house. Yeah, and there was no. some talk about doing a ceiling like that to kind of get that sound to amplify out yeah. to people. Yeah. And it makes sense, but when you start getting into specialized services like that, you can add up in price quite quickly. Yeah. And again, like what you were saying about the field days of, of three, four day weekend, uh, I had never looked at it that way. And this year we have band concerts. Ten of them in the summer. Ten of them yeah. in the summer. I mean, there are other things now. Weather, weather the, permitted. Graduate the right. summer sounds and, and now and Moving graduation. And, yeah, graduation. But it's still, yeah, it's still a recreational, part-time, valuable, yes, absolutely necessary. Well, the other part was too, along with the stairs, was the first concept was to bring it aesthetically right. to So it begins to match. The well, the black paint's going to do that, yeah. at least temporarily. 
Yeah, I and think... I realized that was, oh my god, we still don't look at, like it. It looks like water pipe. Well, you know, the water pipe really has sufficed since World War II. <laughs> and if we paint it, and I'm an, I'm an EBA member. Um, yeah. And if we paint it black to match the rest of it until we can afford to change it, then I think that will work. And I think some so of the other conversation with the accessibility, I mean, there, were, there was discussion around so that's like important. lifts and elevators and stuff, but I also raised a concern with that vandalism almost immediately when you go up there now, there's stuff written down on the boards, and then you have to weatherproof that as well. So part of the conversation with maybe not like dropping it down entirely, but maybe like taking a layer off essentially of the center block, it drops like nine inches, that's less of the ramp that you would have to have because the ramp you would need right now would probably circle the park to be <laughs> a little drastic, but essentially you would need a significantly long ramp mm -hmm. just to meet code. So now, my, would, a, uh, would a lift be more economically feasible? Depends. I mean, the sky's the limit on those. So, so. you got to drop the whole bandstand and build a massive ramp. Right. What would that cost versus, right. say, a little elevator? So the plan right now is to have um, our architecture gentlemen, the game plan is going to be one, two, three different plans basically to bring before you guys to kind of, okay, we like this, we like this, we don't like that, and kind of either piece it together and then we can have a budget, like this is what it's going to cost, so now we go out and try to find funding and we're going to start look, trying to find funding, like what opportunities are there right, right now, and I mean, I, I firmly believe in hitting up the Lions Club a little bit because of June Dairy Day, you know, EDCA. I don't think the band really has a lot of money to put towards it, but I mean... But it's a thing that everyone uses. I mean, it, that, it, how yeah. often is it that we get a, a parts use permit that the company yeah, provides? It's an important yeah, part yeah, of the really so, And I think there probably are art yes. grants out there. Oh. They're just arts is so important yeah. to communities and help. Um, yeah, it's definitely going to take some digging, but I, I'm confident there's money out there. We just need yeah. to find it. And, and then, then the scale of the size of the branch is right. Is, awesome. Yeah. So right. what, um, huh. what are we willing? Huh. I just don't want to get anyone's hopes up and have the committee approach us with an idea that's so far out of our price point yeah. and, and then nothing gets done at all. I think we have to accept that we're probably going to need to spend some money now to do some stuff that might be redone with a much nicer renovation sometime down the road, um, if there's ever a grant money to do that. So I know there was concern projects. about the plaque in the front if we move the stairs, but I mean, to the back to the front, but is it an option to, take, to move that plaque and put the stairs so then the plaque's not covered. I mean, I don't know the history behind that plaque being there. I don't know if that's an option, but I feel like there's well, a there used to be stairs in the front. There used to be. They suddenly right. disappeared, and I don't know where they went. Right. Unless there never was, and we're all just making I'm stuff. sure. No, you can, no, you, can tell tell <laughs> you can tell if you go up and look sure. at the railing. Kenny was showing yeah. it this morning. You can clearly yeah, tell the where place. the railing, where the stairs were, because Ken said they put in the that front piping. Right. And when did that happen? I didn't ask him when. I mean, I My know. youngest son graduated from high school in 1988. We used those stairs. Oh no, it was recently. It was the last six, six years. I would say no. Whatever. I know because they, they were gone before Gary got here, and he's yeah. been here for eight years. Yeah, they've been. Uh, they it's in the ten to fifteen year before. range, I believe. I know when I worked for the cable company, they were there, and shortly after they were gone. And the plaque is in the center. So it's it's dead center in the I, front. Somehow I doubt there's anything written that says the plaque must be mounted here. No, but it probably <laughs> could stay, though, too, because the, uh, I don't know if it's ADA. No. Either way, you, you can only have a certain girth of stair per rail. Yeah. And so you can make it like, a, you know, stairs on both sides with two feet of rail and plaque still in the middle where it belongs. Everybody's happy. So there's ways around. So that was, we'll that was my thought was instead of in the front on each side you have the what basement. I can't ever think of the word the hatch. Hatch. Thank you. To the <laughs> you know, the thingy. The hatch, you know, on one on so when you have like graduation stuff, you're coming up one side and going out the other was but the stupid hatch is in our way. But I mean, do we need that hatch? If it's not gonna be used 
it just for storage. I don't know if you need the two points of entry anymore or exit, I should say. But there's a million possibilities. I just wanted to give you a heads up, and I know you were all in the email, but yeah, I think there needs to be a little direction, direction on it because right now I think we're thinking the sky is the limit. Right. Which I mean, I applaud the enthusiasm 100%, but reality is we don't have a sky the limit budget on that. It's easy to spend somebody else's money. Okay. Well, and I think we're forgetting that we're spending our own money at the end of the day because this does affect the tax rate that yep. nobody wants to increase. <laughs> so, a budget. Does anybody have any numbers that come to head in their mind immediately? Like 10,000? 80,000? 5,000? I know dollars add up really fast. They do. Yeah. So let's just say bare bones, we need wheelchair and stairs. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's an easy 10000 right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. You add another 10 for where we're going? 20. Knowing that if we budget 10, when we finally get, a, get around to do it, Everything that we're going to do is going to cost twice as much as it did when we made the decision. Yeah. And if we have some left over, well, fine. It can go into a fund. I don't think we have enough. No, I don't think so either. <laughs> I think we have. I was just, you know, having a nice experience. I, basically, I think what's going to happen is whatever we budget is whatever we're going to get back for an idea. If we budget a hundred thousand, yeah. we're going to get a very nice, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I'm thinking 25. Okay. And that'll just give give people some ideas, and if and if they can get quotes, or we can get quotes for what stair stairs, and then either or both a ramp, get quotes for both a ramp and an elevator, just to see give us an idea. But we'll start with 25 for now. Be just one of those simple elevators, kind of like the one that's in the Methodist Church. Yeah. I think that one was talked about. It could about. be a chair, too? No, not in the state of Vermont. Oh, no? Mm -hmm. I went through that already with the church. You know, she, yeah. there's the stair lifts? There's a local business that has a stair lift. Which one? I'm not naming names here. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, it isn't. I went, had a chat with the fire marshal when we wanted to get a stair lift for the church, and we were going to have to have an elevator. No. Absolutely. Because no I think somebody brought a picture it. of that elevator. Alan or Pierre had a picture of that <coughs> elevator. To so, talk about you mean the unnamed elevator that he's talking about? This. No, 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 the one at the church. Oh. The one at the church. Oh, the Methodist church. Methodist. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm talking about the, we're going to get one for the Catholic church. And I know they make them yeah. for, Absolutely for not. outdoor. I've seen them on like boat docks and stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, in the state of Maine, you can have one that goes up four stories. Not just one stair chair, but wherever you need them. Yeah. Because there's one, two, three, four, there's five of them. But in the state of Maine, they're legal. In does a commercial bill. Does that mean? It was another story. Does it even count as a story? It's only six feet, maybe? Up there? Yeah. yeah. It's closer to 10. It's that pretty high up. Yeah. 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 It's a, yeah, it's, it's a fair. Okay, distance. so we'll call it a full story. But it's, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that would be great if. You could do it because it's certainly well. That's well. I don't know how much. I'm just thinking. The one for my house was going to be twenty-five thousand dollars. For an elevator? No, for a stair chair, stair lift. Oh, because okay. my stairs go like this so. and then like this. My yeah, and then the outdoor like elevator is outside of the price range you were, the budget you were suggesting. Well, I'm just thinking yeah. a really simple external elevator. That you yeah. Can wheel right in off the sidewalk mm -hmm. and, and just up it would go. You yeah. go in the back. The Almost back like side. a freight elevator. Yeah. Yeah. I, that that was discussed as an option that it didn't need to be anything over the top or fancy. No. Just, mm -hmm. just just a way to get them up there. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Or heavy equipment. <laughs> we'll just bring the bucket truck. Get a long <laughs> cylinder. You can weld it. Oh, we can make it happen, but is it yeah. going to be legal? <laughs> Probably not. Oh, everything has to be perfect. We're not talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> the minor details, Sam. <laughs> There's uh, a chairlift at the. Catholic Church in Franklin, the church is closed. The chairlift is sitting there. But it wouldn't 
it wouldn't pass in the state of Vermont. Nothing. Not passes. according to the fire market. The state yeah. of Vermont. Yeah, that's right. Nothing passes. Uh, so yeah, Eli, you missed it. We were discussing giving a budget right. to the committee. I'm thinking 25 would buy us a set of stairs and hopefully a chairlift of some sort. Good. Maybe some left over, maybe. But give them that as a preliminary budget number. Okay. And then if we can find grants, it's great. We'll just mm -hmm. add the call. Yeah. But I don't really want to commit any more than that for right now. I think that's more than fair for what needs to happen immediate. I think there's like I think Heather just said it. There's kind of an immediate need that has to happen, and then there's the bigger dream right. of what we would like to have happen. But we need to fix the immediate issues right now. And even if we found a grant, that'd still be two to five years, probably, based on funding cycles and right engineering and all that. So right. And there there should be a lot of accessibility grants out there, right? Yes, we so. talked about a few at the meeting and. Um, Couple of us are going to do a little more research. AARP, that, you know, AARP there's a T-Mobile community grant. Um, we're going to look at some of the state grants and just I mean, keep. It kind of checks every box. Yes. So. I, yeah. There's even like the. I don't know if it counts, but like those northern border grants and stuff. I'm sure we could make it work somehow. Yeah. Right? Bandstand yeah. does everything. Right. It's like it is vital to our economy yeah. based yeah. on like all of our. Uh, events that we have there. ADA have any actual? So, right. yeah, there's definitely... Yeah, we're going to definitely do a lot of research into that. For sure. Yeah. All right, so okay. sounds like we have some direction for the board. Um, so Dean has read my message, but he has graciously not commented yet. <laughs> Congratulations, John. On your <laughs> I, <was gonna> say. <laughs> I thought you said it. Flip a coin? Yeah. Rock, paper, scissors? I think we. I'll do an alternate. Make, How about like that? If you can't make it, I'll go up there. Uh, we can do a motion. I think they're trying to make it so just to be safe. If we can do a motion, I think that would just be. Great. Motion to appoint Abby and John as our two delegates, if you will, to the exploratory committee for policing. And I don't know if they need an uh, alternate, but I would all volunteer for an alternate. Okay. I move that we appoint Abby and John and Sam as an alternate to this policing that. committee. Jamie at the first, Leonard the second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Okay. Um, one other quick other business. Um, so Greta from NRPC is asking, it, it sounds like a kind of a, a box they need to check. So they need to have a meeting between NRPC and it's called a planning program meeting. Um, this basically talks about all of what we should be done about the joint meeting. Northwest Regional Planning Commission? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, well, a joint meeting with them, or it would be Greta. Um, and this is going to be the tricky part. So, probably me, Abby, Billy Joe, Jesse, but then it doesn't have to be all of you, but a couple trustees and a couple of select board members. And all a couple of. Um, Planning Commission and a couple of ERE folks. All in the same room at the same time? That's the goal. Woohoo! the cats. So at this point, um, well, uh, just be on the lookout. Teams. I've offered up that. I, mean, I think the easiest would be either our meeting or their meeting. Just stay, you know, they stay and we join a half hour after or whatever, or join after, or they come to our meeting and put it in or whatever. Is it an executive thing? No. It's not executive. Um, <clears throat> so just kind of be on the lookout for your email if we can pin down a date or start pinning down a date. I'm guessing at this point it will be until September. What's the dread the, is trying to get it sooner, but. What's the agenda for it? Like, what's it's the a, topic? It's just uh, kind of like talk about all the joint things, you know, catch us up with the planning committee, what they're up to. Uh, and it sounds like it has to be spearheaded by NRPC. One of those meetings of the people who meet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this is a new thing. No, it sounds like it should be done yearly. But I don't remember that. hearing that. Well, she mentioned that planning program, and I never heard. You like research the, the uh, There's all lots the of files shows. and stuff and emails. I never, I didn't find it. Right, so <laughs> she sent a um, a uh, copy today of a. I think it would probably be easiest for the town to host because all of those things fall under the jurisdiction of the town. Right. 
That's and that's why I mentioned. I mean, easy to, to get us a couple of these folks to yeah. show back that after they one of their meetings or before or something. Yep. But just be on the lookout for date requests on that. Okay. Great. Any other business? Mrs. Duso the other day confronted me. She says, we're up high enough here, but she said, if we get a flood or, you know, big fire or something like that, do we have, like, a evacuation? Uh, yes. Tell her to take the survey. We already got all that. Well, we have a, we're working on our, we're working on our. Your name. The water gets that high, we're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> We're working on a hazard mitigation plan, so you don't want to go take the survey. Um, but yeah, we're working on a hazard mitigation plan, which would speak to all of that. Okay. Um, it's almost done, but we've like, done research on floods and fire and um, terrorist attacks and all that stuff. Is Pierre Laterno one of the head ones on that? No, he is on the um, EMP, the Emergency yeah. Management okay. Plan. And that's more, um, Immediate, like if it's flooding okay. tomorrow. Yeah, that's their, That's what they're on. So that's more like when we had the storm. We had to open up uh, the school. And Pierre went there and stuff. That's more of the emergency, like emergency. Then we power down and really cold. Yeah, uh -huh. the hazard mitigation plan is a little bit more forward. Thinking. It allows us to be able to be standing in line for FEMA if things really exactly. go in the toilet. Right, right. And it makes so. sure that we have projects in place for long term looking ahead. No, she said I know you got something but you know it should be brought up in the public more. It's we've it's been on our Facebook Posted page, there's posters yeah. all over the village about it for Talked people about to get it in our public meetings. It's hanging up at Napa. Yep. It's it is all over. It is a little bit she all over. She may have not seen that one. <laughs> okay. Okay. Don't yeah. stop in, we'll discuss it with her. Yeah, okay. Tell them at the same time. Yep. <laughs> next door. All right. Any other business? Hearing none, I will uh, entertain a motion to move into executive session for the purpose of discussing negotiations with premature public knowledge may compromise the position of the municipality as well as the personnel matters. Second. You know, the first. Sandy with the second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay.